this uh, talk is going to be about Scala Meta, um, and I'd like to ask you two questions in the spirit of, uh, of sing-along. Uh, first of all, who has ever suffered frustration because other people don't know how to format Scala code? All right, that's a lot. Well, Olaf to, Olaf to the rescue, Scala format, which is uh, exactly which is the solution to all these problems forever. Now, question number two is, who has ever, suffer, ever suffered frustration because of Scala macros? Oh, that's not too many. Well, for all of you and for all of you future sufferers, again, all of to the rescue with Scala Meta and, uh, and a great talk, workshop. Um, so I hope uh, we all walk away from this as Scala Meta masters. And uh, I would like you all to give a very warm applause to all of uh, Hello, everybody. I'm Olaf. Uh, and I'm really... <laughs> Hi, Dick. <laughs> and, and I'm really excited to, uh, to talk about Scala Meta today. Uh, we are quite privileged to have uh, uh, Eugene Bermako as well joining on the workshop. Uh, he, he's in fact the author of Scala Meta, uh, and uh, and also Michael from in, uh, JetBrains, and uh, he's doing some really neat stuff on 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 making uh, debugging macros in IntelliJ uh, fun. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> He's the guy you should talk to if you have read Squiggly Works. So, uh, uh, did you? So, I recommend everyone just uh, get your laptops up and uh, follow the link in the Getter channel. And um, what I have prepared is, yeah, I will do that. So, there should be like a, a tutorial that I've set up for this workshop. Uh, and uh, I'm going to split the, the workshop into four parts. Uh, and I'm hoping to, to be able to, to catch all of them during the workshop. So that's why it's a whirlwind tour. It's going to be quite fast. So in case you're behind, if you don't manage to finish a part, we'll, we'll stop at a certain point and then just say, OK, we're going to continue to the next one. And, and what we're going to go into is, is, is we're going to talk about Scalameda tokens. Uh, then Scalameda trees. Uh, then we're going to write some dev tools using Scalameda. And we're going to run it on like 3 million lines of Scala code uh, and look at the diffs. Uh, and then we're going to write a, a Scalameda macro annotation based on inline meta, the zip that's currently uh, was just open a PR like a week ago. So um, I recommend you, you just get started. Uh, the repo where, where this GitHub page is set up is, is here, and it should contain all the infrastructure that you need to, to, to get started. Uh, so uh, have you managed to run? So there's going to be fault-breaking tests that I'm hoping that you can fix. So that's fine if it crashes. Um, And um, whenever you want to kind of, uh, people have different preferences for their IDs. Uh, I use personal IntelliJ, but you can use Enzyme or you can use Vim or Sublime or whatever you like. Uh, I like to usually have things in what I call a playground, which is just like a, a, an empty test suite where I have all the imports and I can just work whatever I want. And then I like to have, uh, I maybe should increase the size here. And then I like to have something like just SPT running here, running the playground. This way I can uh, just iterate quite fast and, 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 and explore the API. But you can also just open up a console um, and start parsing. Uh, so I'm not going to be speaking the whole time. I, uh, and I think uh, the best way is to people to actually try to follow here. Um, and then uh, uh, 
raise their questions, ask. Uh, and there is a, I don't know if you can find it, there is, I open a Gitter, Gitter channel just for this workshop in case people want to share links to, to each other without spamming the, uh, the Scala world Gitter channel. But I don't have a, it's, it's Gitter IM slash all over PG slash Scala Meta Workshop, uh, if you can find it. So now we start and we're going to have 20 minutes allocated to tokens and trees, uh, which kind of play well together. And uh, I'm just going to be doing some stuff on the screen here. Feel free to be on your own pace. Um, is, is anyone behind or is anyone like not able to clone the repo? You need to resolve and download the internet first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So sorry. Yeah. It's still going. All right, so while we're waiting for snapshots to release, uh, to, to resolve, uh, there was a stable release that we didn't update the build on, but it's fine. Um, I'll, I'm going to show some cool stuff here um, on the screen. So I think tokens, which is probably, so, yes? Excuse me? No, I'm probably somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, uh, brief intro to, to Scala Meta is that I think people think quickly about macros and they want to start jumping into macros. Uh, but I think what people will bump into immediately is that they're not familiar with traversing trees and, and manipulating tokens. And, and what's really great with Meta is it's really easy to get started with it as a library without any macros, without any toolboxes or, or importing contacts from uh, the compiler, uh, and we can actually just start in a console, so the people who are waiting for the project to resolve can just start in a console uh, and start tokenizing. And uh, uh, so, what I think is really neat here is that you can, uh, when you import, it's going to add a lot of extension methods on strings and, and Java IO files, and. Uh, uh, and you can tokenize, and that gives you tokens, which is not so exciting. Uh, and, and then you have these, I would say, the, the two most important methods that you use all the time while debugging and, and implementing Scala Meta stuff is, is syntax and structure. So, um, so in a nutshell, syntax just shows you the code that it's like that's the source code that you'd be writing in IntelliJ uh, and that, that you feed to the compiler. So when you do two string, as you can see here, it actually shows val x equals two. That's just calling syntax behind the scenes. Um, and and it, that gives you a string. But you shouldn't rely on two string for your applications. You should just say, I want the syntax of, of, of these tokens. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, structure, which is not something that the compiler can compile. It's the, uh, uh, it, it'll show all sorts of metadata about the, the values that you have. So you have like a token, beginning of file, the offsets and the end offsets. And uh, 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 that's really neat. Uh, and now uh, a tokens is that the sequence, you could usually have like a sequence of tokens. So, so you can also call syntax and structure on a single token. Uh, so I'm just going to give us here like the val x equals 2. And, and now you're kind of seeing more in detail what, what Scala Meta is doing uh, with your code or, or what you're parsing, what you're tokenizing. We haven't even started parsing. But what's really neat, and, and I think uh, I, I, I sold in the abstract that there were two key features of Scala Meta that I really want to focus on. And I think that you, if you take anything away, it's like, this is what's unique about Scala Meta, is that there's high fidelity tokens and comprehensive trees. And, and the high fidelity tokens means that it preserves all the original syntactic details in the, the code. So you, you can see spaces have their own. If you, if you put three spaces, it's going to be three space tokens. And each of them has their appropriate offsets. Uh, and this means that you, you, you really have full control of the source code. And has anyone here written like a macro? Uh, and uh, have you tried to under, like get some syntactic details in the body of what you're like when you get like a tree? Uh, and usually it's like this desugared 
there are no four comprehensions, no comments, uh, which can be a bit scary. Uh, but the really nice thing in, in, in Scalomate is that you always, you can work with it and you can debug and you can see exactly the source code the way it was, uh, which is neat, <coughs> right? And then the last part about tokens, which I think is important, and that's equality. Because you're gonna be in the exercises uh, soon, you're gonna find something in, 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 in tokens and, and, you, and then you need to say, I, I wanna find something and you have to be careful with equality because it's actually uh, not exactly reference equality, but yeah, the default equality is, is if you're taking it from one string here and another here and it's foobar and foobar, it's not gonna be the same. Uh, what you need to do really is you wanna be careful and say, I'm comparing by syntactic equality or by structural equality. So what we see here, they're the same syntactically and, and, and even if you move the foobar left and right, it's still gonna be syntactically the same. Uh, if you do structural equality, it's gonna be the same because it's still in the same position, the same offsets. But if you, do, if you move it around the foobar here, it's gonna have a different offset. So you remember that the offsets are part of the structure. So that's gonna be false here because the foobar has a different offset. Uh, and this is not so exciting. All right, so uh, I had two test suites that maybe you can uh, uh, play around with, which is uh, uh, is balance suite and then strip away trailing commas suite. Uh, so any questions or any anyone stuck or? Still downloading the internet. <laughs> How many have run anything? People are still resolving. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's a shame. All right. Well, uh, then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll open up uh, the uh, balanced suite and start. I think it was something like like this and view mode, presentation mode, and then it's like. Michael, can you? No. All right. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, no, it's fine. So uh, here we're is balanced, and it's obviously not true all the time. And I'll just show like a bit what you do when you're working with is balance, right? Um, so we just want to know like how many are they close and open, and you want to match on the tokens. These exercises are kind of boring and it feels a bit like going back to elementary school. Uh, no worries, we're gonna be writing uh, actually uh, some really cool stuff later on and doing macros. So what we can do is for example, say token and, uh, and then we can you know, match on them for example, if it's a case left bracket brace then it will increment, we'll just say var balance equals zero. It's not pure functional programming at all, but let's have a left one. We'll say that the balance plus equals one. And then we say right, and now it's minus. And I unfortunately and I'm gonna run the Hair Scala World Balanced Suite. Scala World Workshop. Uh, type mismatch required unit. Balanced equals zero. There we go. And we're running and we're getting some match errors, I guess. It's so big that I can't see. And that's because I forgot to match here. And now we have some stuff running. And this is, it's not, that's true. This is balanced, that's true. Uh, 
Now we're failing on some other cases. So I'm not gonna, if, if you really like these exercises, you can work on it later tonight. Uh, but, but this is just to kind of get you, you started on, on matching on tokens. Um, what you have here is you can deal with brackets and parents, and now you have to make sure that they're matching. Uh, and, and now you have to make sure that you're closing a curly brace closes a curly brace and not a square, square bracket. This is the kind of stuff you, I, I used to do in competitive programming, and I think that, that was kind of fun always. Right? So people are still downloading uh, everything? Oh, well, that was a shame. Downloading something called Paradise right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna jump straight into trees since this is, uh, uh, I guess I could have expected it to take a long time for people to, to resolve. But, but trees are really, really awesome uh, in Scala Meta and they, they, that's really where the fun starts. And uh, the, uh, the, there are two ways to, to create trees. That's uh, one way in the simplest way I'd say is, is quasi quotes because you just put Q and then write code like the way it is, and that'll give you the exact tree of, of, of that code. Uh, and uh, so we, we see here it even resolves to, it's, uh, to a def uh, class, def in class, which is pretty neat. And uh, the really nice thing is that they can be composed. I think anyone who's worked with quasi-codes, I think, loves them and, and enjoys it. Uh, and, and Scala Meta has pretty good uh, quasi-codes. Uh, and here we're deconstructing, grabbing out the name, taking syntax, uh, and then say you is a baby if your age less than one. So, uh, and uh, the biggest issue that you might bump into is that you can't put in comments in quasi quotes yet. I think this is just a bug. Uh, but uh, the, the way to get that is to use the, the alternative method, which is parse. So here we say parse. Uh, and now we have to, to, to explicitly specify if it's a, uh, or, or if we're parsing a statement. And uh, uh, what's really neat is you can play around with all these examples in the, the common, in the, in the console. So here we have an object main, extends app, print line one, parse it as a source and that works. Uh, and you can do it on a file as well, so sometimes you're just, you, you don't wanna paste it into the console, you can just read it from a file. Um, and that works too. And uh, this is probably the most common issue that you would bump into is that you want to parse a statement as a compilation unit. And it's going to say, I expected a class or a definition. Uh, and this is easily solvable by just saying I'm parsing a statement. So at any time, feel free to, <laughs> feel free to, to stop me and ask. Uh, this part here? All right, so you have like a, a compilation unit and that, then you need to have, ob you, you can't have top level methods. You need to have like an object and a method inside, uh, inside the object. So uh, what you need to do is you have to be kind of explicit and say I'm, I'm parsing a compilation unit or I'm parsing a statement. Um, and, uh, and that's how you, uh, and you can say I'm parsing a case and that's what you get a case. Uh, that's, uh, and Scala made a bunch of parsers, but you really only need source and stat in my experience. Uh, and then there, it has some explanations here if you want to parse SPT files, which is pretty neat. Uh -huh. And uh, I still got a few minutes left on the trees part. It's fine if you're still downloading the world, because the fun part is the dev tools and the macros part. Uh, so you're, I hope you'll be able to, to join us then. Mm -hmm. uh, right, and uh, syntax and structure work the same as with trees, no, with tokens, and, uh, and this is really handy often. And same with equality. Uh, yeah, this is actually the exercise that I'm gonna be continuing and, and moving into the DevTools part. So uh, I'm gonna explain a bit here, and I think everyone should be able to do this at the, before the end of the workshop. Uh, and th this has to do with, uh, uh, have you seen your colleagues write code like this, catch e-throwable? And what do you think then? <laughs> yeah. 
Wouldn't it be nice if you just had like a bot that would just fix that for them? Uh, and and I catches yes, that's definitely what you what your colleague wanted to do, <laughs> and stack overflow errors and out of memories and everything, and you're gonna have your your uh, production machines in a zombie state. Uh, so I think the the general you know, best practice is to catch it in a non-fatal. You need to be really, really sure what you're doing if you're catching a, a throwable. Now, lots of linters could like poke at this and say, hey, don't do that. Uh, I think that's, it's more fun to just have a tool that just fixes it for you and you don't have to think about it. Um, so now once we've gotten a bit familiar with uh, trees and tokens, I think this is an exercise that, that you all should definitely try to implement. Uh, and what I want to do is then put this guy into a command line interface, which is already implemented. You don't have to do any of that. Uh, and then you can run it on, uh, on three million lines of Scala code and, and see how good your implementation is. Are you handling corner cases? Or is it working? So uh, uh, I'm going to take a look at that, which is the, hold on one second. That is the. Uh, non-fatal test. So basically what we have here is a test suite and we have, oh yeah, this presentation mode is a bit broken. Okay, cool. So just to show that it's quite straightforward to work with Scala Meta and, and run your own test suite and do stuff, I just say like, here, let's check that when I run it on this, I want to get this. What we want to do is make sure that the name is preserved and put in here, because otherwise, if we just change it into E, it will break. Um, and what I'm going to do here is say uh, non-fatal rewrite. So non-fatal is something that you should implement. Uh, and uh, that is the uh, here, dev tools, non-fatal. It's a bit big right there. Uh, I feel the room is a bit quiet, so not enough typing on keyboards. Are people still resolving? Oh, my God. All right, well, uh, lesson learned then. Um, hmm? I'm going to show, I mean, uh, time is running, so I'm just going to work on this here, and uh, you can join in. So now what we want to do is just, I have this helper guy which we can use, which is a patch. Right, this doesn't really, presentation mode doesn't really work. Can't I just increment? Increase the font size. Michael? Font size? Parents. Right, control. Yeah! <sighs> Amazing. And, and that was what you were looking for. Rewrite non-fatal test. All right, now we're talking. We got lots of exceptions. And that's because All right, we have a, a success here. Let's just make that an empty string. All right. So people work very differently, but I like to just start with something that crashes and then hack on it and keep it running, and, 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 and then you see what changes. So now we're just giving an empty string. And that's not, we, we obtained a zero, and, and it's saying, telling us, I expected this. That's cool. So I can just say foobar, and it's going to say, you gave me a foobar, but I wanted to get that. And we can be simple and just say code. Uh, oh yeah, because that's a. Uh, yeah, code is a, an input, which is a Scala Meta thing. Uh, and we can just say new string, code cars. 
and that'll run. And now we're just not changing anything. So the diff is going to be minus here uh, and plus there. Cool. I'm going to cheat a bit because I have the solutions in a separate branch uh, later on. But the, the idea here is that, is that we, 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 we just want to build a, um, a sequence of patches. We just want to say, I want to patch this. I want to replace that. And a patch is just uh, a token from this token to that token, replace it with this string. Simple enough. Now I'm going to show some really neat things with uh, Meta. You know what? I'm going to show off a bit my tool here. Because it's so big, I want to use a smaller. Nice. Let's make that 50. Ah, too much. All right. Cool. Uh, what we're doing here now is uh, we got tree. And this is a Scala Meta tree. And we can do collect. And we can pattern match on, on quasi quotes. So let's say we want to say case. If it's a, a name of throwable, right? Don't really care. Then we want to build a patch from like the, the start of this guy. This is just the case here. And we can say C dot. Oh yeah, we want to. So IntelliJ, there's one reason I'm going to do an as instance of just to get like out of completion. Uh, he's working on. It's already implemented, where you basically get that type in the the, the pattern match, and 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 we get a case, and that one has a pattern. The pattern is basically this guy right there. Uh huh. And what we want is pattern. Tokens, the first one. Pattern, tokens, last one. And now we want to replace it with something that's like non-fatal named like this name dot syntax, right? And let's see if this compiles. Oh, yeah, we don't know yet. So let's LM patches. <laughs> I'm sorry? The, yeah, I think. Is, is this still readable? Yeah, because it was a bit crazy to have like 10 characters on that. Right, so a patch is just uh, this is just something that I th wrote up earlier, and what it does is just this. It's just a case class, and I'm saying for this range of tokens, throw them away and just insert this string instead. So what you do is you just collect the patches of these and you want to apply it to like a string, and it's going to take all the tokens that we saw earlier, throw them away. And, and insert whatever you wanted it to be instead. Because what we want to do here is say basically, for these tokens here, which is like a, an E identifier, a colon, space, and throwable, put them away and just put in non fatal with the name of what we're matching. And you want this the whole code? Yeah, so what you do here, is, well, it's pretty cool, is that uh, this is a Scalameda tree, and, and you can say collect, just like a regular data structure. And what collect does is it just traverses all the children recursively, continues, and you can use a pat pattern match on the nodes that you want to match. So you say, I'm going to just match on the case, as long as it's something that's like E underscore throwable, no, colon throwable. Um, and then you're going to say, I'm going to patch it. I'm going to remove everything, um, which is basically this part here, and, and do that. And now I'm going to just say. So the token that had in the last is really just a range. Yeah, so this guy here is, is a tokens. Yeah, but it's a range from start, start to end. 
Right. So, so the pattern basically is, is this is tokens, and we're just there. That's a sequence of tokens. We're oh, just saying okay. take the head of it. It's it's just a, like a, is that an array, uh, and we can just say we just want that one and this one. Uh, now we're going to say patch run, and we need a sequence of tokens, which is three dot tokens, and now we're going to do the patches. And that's just this. And I have no idea what's going to happen, but boom. Uh, something that I think would be really hard in general. It can be implemented in really small lines of code. So any questions about this? Yeah? Non-fatal test. This is the fun part, right? Now we start poking at the test and say, like, hey, what do we do if we, you mean, what if we put a space here? Yeah. Works. Uh, it can be as much as we want. I think we're going to have trouble if it's, like, if it's inside. That's, like, nasty. But then your colleague totally deserves that comment to be removed. Uh, but look here, if we put like comment, I think we're going to have a failing test. Yeah, because the comment is preserved, which is amazing. Why did you lose the expression? So comment here, and now it passes, which is just incredible. Yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. Right. No, 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 no. Of course not. So, so this wouldn't case in this case because we're we're not uh, 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 we're not. It's not a fully quali fully, quali fully qualified name. So, if you want to go really fancy here, you know, you, you start. And that's what I have uh, in the exercise. Is uh, like uh, some extra points for extra credits for the ones who are really motivated. Uh, is to, to check at the beginning, is there an import? If not, import it. Uh, or if you want to be simple, you can just say instead of non-fatal, just give the fully qualified name. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I think this is pretty good for now. I mean, this is, uh, uh, and, and seeing if, I, if this was this easy, it should be quite straightforward, for example, to deal with the imports. Uh, what, what I think is another interesting extra credit is you're, you really know what you're doing and you really want to swallow out of memory exceptions or something, you might need an escape hatch. Uh, and I think it's, you generally should avoid uh, having comments saying like disable a tool, but uh, what we could do in this case is just say, so the, the common line tool that we're making is called Scala World, because I think John would really like that. Uh, and we could have something like this. And what it should do then is actually. Should you better annotation? I'm sorry? Should you better annotation these things? In my opinion, you should have something like case fatal, right? You have you should be doing something like like this. But this, yeah, I'm not an expert on, on what's the best practice here. But at least, at least if you put better the comment would be better test annotation of the case. Uh, a format yeah, right, say like uh, unsafe, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what, and it has like lots of spelling errors, so it's yeah, really yeah. hard to get the annotation. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Can you make sure that this only works in catch um, patterns, not just in patterns? Not just in any like, yeah, exactly. So that's possible because you can match on a on a try. So quasi quotes. And the, the Wi Fi, I guess, is just down because everyone is downloading. Uh, try. So, what you can do is you can actually match here on tries. And then you can just do it on, on these cases, the same one they were doing. Uh, I think it should be quite straightforward. Uh, but. Uh, um, So here we could grab out the cases that are only part of a try-catch. 
and then we can just collect the patches for these cases here. Then we just do a collect. This is a sequence of cases, and we can just collect on that. So what's amazing is you, you have Scala code. You can manipulate it as a data structure. Uh, the way we're used to with collects and the, uh, the transforms and stuff like that. And then it actually does a lot of really smart things behind the scenes for us. Uh, let's make a command line tool called Scala World. Someone asking questions? Uh, has anyone run anything on the machine? Yeah? Cool. At least like a third of the room. <laughs> uh, right. So the the workshop and and what at least what's great is that I've I've kind of tried to document everything here so you can follow it yourself when you have more time to poke at this. But let's go into the dev tools part here because I think that's very cool. Is that what we're going to do now is is um, build a command line tool and run it on stuff. Uh, so the convenient part is that it's already part of a tool and I've already put it in. So what we have to do? Oh wait, did I screw something up? Why was it failing? Hmm? Right. So let's do those away. And see, it's even preserving all the stupid white spaces here and blank lines and everything. And I think I remembered I also had like a logger statement. Let's not do that on 3 million lines of code. So that's fun. I packaged it. I go into here and make install. So I had to get like a really nice tool. And there is a link to a repo which I've used for Scala FMT. It has like 3 million lines of code, so you can clone it and, and uh, get it in your machine. I'm going to plus the screen a bit. And that's a lot. And now we have Scala World. And the thing is, you can have multiple rewrites. So this one is we only want to run the non fatal one. And I think, yeah, it should be empty, right? Let's just, I think I. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> That took, didn't take a long time, did it? How long did it take? That took four seconds. Wow. Uh, get if. And that's pretty cool. Oh, wait a second. Oh, yeah, we added like new lines at the end of the file for some reason. I think I'm doing that uh, in here. This is pretty cool. It's like here it's E2. And then it just throws it in. And everything is, is, there's no other diffs. It didn't touch anything else. It's pretty neat. And uh, let's just go. Yeah, that one is, I think, is my fault. Uh, so this is kind of exciting. What's really neat is that there's not only a command line interface here, there's also an SPT plugin and an IntelliJ plugin. So you could actually just put this into your CI build and uh, have fun, uh, crack, you know, fail the CI build. If, 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 you, if the rewrite introduces a diff in your project, then you probably just want to run the rewrite before sending a PR. It's just the same as formatting. So we were able to use a lot of the same infrastructure here. And uh, obviously what we want to deal with, adding import ports and stuff like that, that's the boring stuff that's really important. But uh, I hope you are impressed. So uh, before I, I think this summarizes like the dev tools and, and, and Scala meta tokens and trees part, but I'm going to talk about macros as well. And I'm sure you're really excited to see macros. So any questions, last questions before I, I change? It won't compile. Yeah. So what you have to do is you have to you have you, you have this full source file uh, in in the, I mean you have the full source file there. So what you have to do is you have to to check if the import is there. If not, import it. Or if you want to be lazy, but I think that's a bad solution. Is just to say case you know Scala util the full qualified name of it. 
but you have to keep in mind that this is people have this in their source code. This is what people are reading. So you want to be really careful in making it readable and, and not m mechanical. So, so I mean, this is just like a demo at a workshop. Uh, doing the real deal takes a bit longer than two minutes. Um, but I, I think I hope like inspired you that this is something you can do. Uh, and and the patch file. I actually implemented it today. It's and it's kind of <laughs> yeah, 35 lines of code uh, where I'm just taking a sequence of tokens, and if it's there, then I replace it with this. If it's inside, just remove it, and then otherwise preserve it, and then just it's just a flat map, and then you fold left on here. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry? I was wondering why this tool is working at all because I was thinking that you don't put in the um, body again. Do you capture the body? Yeah? Does it put in the body after? Uh, the, the body, you mean the. Which is the body on your. Uh, if it's just to make mm, Which body do you mean? It's pressure. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's you mean this guy here? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not uh, touching that one. Because here, I'm just taking the pattern. So this one has a body, but I'm leaving it alone. I'm, I'm just saying, patch only the pattern, which I'm only just saying, just patch this part here. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, this is the only thing I care about. Like, the first token of the pattern and the last token, just throw it away and put this instead. And, and the, this, this is outside the range of, of the tokens. Does that answer your question? Or? Sort of. Yeah. This is, we're purely working at a syntactic level at the moment. And, and, and that's the, the kind of like sobering moment when you, you see this demo and you're like, we don't have any types, there's no symbols, there's no compilation units. That's why it's so fast as well, because you can run it on like Kafka in four seconds, because I don't have to compile it. Uh, but it, <laughs> it limits a lot to what we can do. Uh, but I still think this, we can quite confidently know that this is non-fatal and you shouldn't be importing non-fatal in some esoteric way. So that's why I picked this as a, an example. If I, um, if I write some pilot plugins, extend the language in some way, can I, can I extend your translation support to match my pilot plugins? Uh, Eugene? Well, actually, we, we have this. So we have this notion of dialects uh, which encapsulate differences between different versions of Scala. So if you want to support your, your compiler plugin, which changes the syntax. And you write it down. So it's uh, it's not straightforward at the moment, but it's definitely possible. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So I'm gonna jump on to the next part, which is macro annotations. So now you've kind of gotten a feel for Scala Meta as a pure library. I haven't talked about macros at all. Yeah. Can you increase the font, please? Oh yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So that was a good question, I'll rephrase. Uh, uh, so why doesn't transforming work as well as the patching? Uh, this is purely because, so there's a dot transform method on trees where I could have just given the, the pattern and, and transformed it in place there. Uh, Scalameda then actually strips away comments at the moment and messes up with indentation for no good reason. Uh, and I think we had a GSOC student working on it all summer who, who has a PR. To, to make it so that it would be less, you wouldn't have to rely on the patch thing. So maybe it'll be possible soon. I think the su solution is still quite succinct and, and readable. So. Is there any other question? All right, so ha have you heard about Scala Meta macros? Some people, right, so, so the idea here, and we saw in, in Martin's talk today, that, that macros in their current state are gonna be 
not supported in Toddy, uh, because what happened with, with macros is that the compiler and the language became the same. And, and what he's working on with Dottie is that we have a new compiler. Uh, whereas lots of libraries and, and Scala libraries are kind of tied to Scala C through macros. And what's really neat with Scala Meta is that it's a clean room implementation. It's not tied to, to any trees or tokens in the, the Scala C compiler. So you can actually uh, could write a macro in Scala Meta and it could work in theory for both Scala C and Dottie. And I'm going to demo that. So Eugene uh, presented very recently. Uh, uh, he, he ported the Paradise plugin for uh, Scala Reflect macros to work with Scala Meta macros. And what's happened? Uh, let me see. Let me close this and go there. Right. So we have a Hello World uh, macro annotation. So it only works for macro annotations at the moment. And I, these are blatantly copied from another guy's uh, repo called Elysium that's linked at the bottom. So if we want to have a main annotation where you expand, it's the same as extends app uh, that uses like a delayed init mechanism that's going to be deprecated in Dottie. What you can do can implement main method instead is just annotate main. Uh, what we do here is that we take the, the definition here take the name of the object, assuming it's an object, and the statements of it. And then we, we create a main method where the statements of the objects become the statements inside the main here. And then we say object now with the new main. Uh, and this expands into a what we expect it to. So what you can do is macros test run and the same, now it's probably going to crash. No, he. Woo. So they, he was publishing today, and we were like moving from snapshots back and forth. Uh, so Scala made a macros, and this is what we did here. Hello, Scala made a macros. Huh? I know, I know, I have here. So I want to welcome. But so. Uh, My Michael here has been working on making it n really nice to debug these. I don't know why this compilation error came. So, and uh, uh, to allow us to expand these and to debug those and then uh, iterate. Uh, so you see, I'm using the IntelliJ ID EAP. I'm afraid it's probably not going to work on my machine, but actually, you can install the EAP, and there's a plugin. Hmm? Uh, and oh wait a second, it worked. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so what you can do now for your macro is actually go to it here, and it expands into what it is. And just to show that this is not hardwired or 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 like uh, anything crazy. Uh, Let's do something else. Let's call it banana. And now I'm going to, you do have to recompile in IntelliJ. This is the first time I've ever compiled anything in IntelliJ. <laughs> I was like, where is the compile button? <laughs> yeah. uh, but what we do now, and boom, and it's a banana method. <laughs> he deserves all the credit for this. <laughs> But you need to have a special uh, build of the Scala plugin. This is not in, and it's in the EAP 2016.3. Uh, there are instructions, I think, in the web. No, but. Right, right, right. Uh, can you comment on the? Yeah. So the, here's a. The plugin, it's going to give you a zip file, and and that you have to go into plugins and 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 install as a zip file. But this is amazing. Think about that. Uh, Eugene, he doesn't want to talk. Uh, right. So what I'm going to do as an exercise here is to do a debug macro annotation. What we would do is add it to a method. Let's say def complicated, args int, 
that's only a one int, so it's an arg. And it gives us an int. And it's gonna say arg plus arg. But this is such a tricky method, we have to debug it. So the idea is that you do something like this, and there is no implementation right here. What we wanna do is print out the argument names, we wanna print out the, their values, we wanna run the method, print out how long it took to run it, and then we're gonna print out the result. Uh, I don't know how much time I have left of the workshop, so I'm gonna kind of cheat and just paste in the solution. I have around 15 minutes, well then I can try and start. So um, the first problem that I encountered when I was working with, with uh, Scala Meta Macros is that I had no in IntelliJ support at all. So this is in, oh, inline works like this now. So now I have the EAP and it actually has like, inline is, has become a keyword uh, and it's not failing. But if you're working in the same IntelliJ version as me, you're gonna get, uh, this is the EAP, EAP. Oh yeah, IntelliJ here. It's gonna look more, <laughs> I have two instances of IntelliJ. Thank God I have enough memory. Uh, it's gonna look like this, which is, this is the bad one. This is probably what you're seeing on your machine in the project right now. But to help you out, I did something cool so you can say, autocomplete. <laughs> and it's really sophisticated and advanced. It's just kind of like not doing anything. Uh, but now it's still bad because inline shouldn't be there, so you have to add a semicolon, and bam, now you get full complete. Uh, and it's actually okay, it's, it's any now, but it's actually okay to say deafen. And now I can get all sort of, uh, well, deafen doesn't have any members, but you have to match on a deafen.def or something. Let's just say deaf. And here we have the name and the params and everything. What's amazing is that whenever we want to debug or run the macro, we just remove the semicolon. It's hacky. As you've seen, there is already a plugin in IntelliJ where this is going to be really nice. Uh, right. So another really, really cool feature is that, let's say, oh, this is still broken here. But, uh, I'm going to borrow my autocomplete world here because then it works like this. Cool. Uh, and now we're gonna just say deafen.match case quasi-code. Does this work? So he was also, huh? Uh, it seems to work? Yeah. So what hasn't worked in IntelliJ is, oh my god. So you maybe didn't notice, but have you worked with quasi quotes here? Is that you don't get the types in if you're unapplying on quasi quotes. So what you do is you get them now. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not meaning to make this an IntelliJ advertisement, so I apologize for that. But uh, I think lots of people use it, and it's kind of important if you want to have a good developer workflow while creating macros. So what we want to do here is actually print out the argument names. And what I like doing is going into this document here in Scalameda and look for defs because usually it's a bit more complicated. Uh, but can't I just do like this? My like D at this. All right, I'm gonna just put in the guy here. All right, cool. Uh, what we want to do is now print out all the, um, we want to expand the body so that it prints out the argument names and their values and then just runs the method as normal, right? So we're gonna have basically a quasi quote, like this, and then we're gonna have uh, uh, something where we print out the params, right? Let's just start the easiest thing. This is how I always work. Can I just do like params? Uh, probably not. Because it doesn't make sense. So what we wanna do, I'm gonna just really kind of quickly jump and show you the solution and go through it because I'm a bit uh, stunned by everything working out. 
and I have here. So what we're going to do is just go here, and then I don't have Scala FMT here, so I should load, and then, all right, cool, it doesn't really, fine. Uh, it's a bit big at the moment. But let's just look what it does here, right? So we have a body. We've already pattern matched on what I had earlier. I just create a, a new block, val start. We're just writing code. The result of the expression, the, the way it elapses, and this is the most verbose part. It's like calling Java util to transfer, translate nanoseconds to milliseconds. Uh, then we just print line method, run in these number of milliseconds, then you return the result. I'm a bit scared to, to run the main object test. And, huh? No, because I haven't compiled it yet. Is it complaining? Debug found. Mac orientation in wrong shape required inland def any. That's fine, I can give you any. You get an any. Oh yeah, I'm always opening up IntelliJ because that's the default key. I don't open by default uh, IntelliJ, I -E -E -A -P. So now I've recompiled it and I think it's happy. And let me see. It's Scala C is running. And I don't know if this is gonna work. Too complex, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, okay, maybe, all right. But uh, what we can do is call our method. So we'll just say main, right? Complicated two. And now we can just do like this. Uh, and I forgot to remove my, is there a semicolon in debug? In the main, maybe that's why it's failing. Maybe that's why it failed earlier, too. And now, yeah, because I had to, I broke this, it should be Annie, right? I'll shrink the size here. And now it's doing something like, an implementation is missing, pre-def question mark. Huh? Do I have triple question marks here? And debug. <laughs> Method complicated ran in two zero milliseconds. Uh, and that's pretty cool. What you're gonna do though, let's say that we changed like cool, started here, and it's gonna run. It's then gonna say method complicated in zero milliseconds. So I have a few cool dev trips for you here in macro annotations. So pro tip, you have to clean your test project before because the incremental compiler doesn't see anything change, changing. So if you just do clean and it's the test project is small, you're gonna get like uh, the new change all the time. So that's pretty nice. Cool complicated in and Let's print out the argument names, right? And then we have params, right? And that is a sequence and sequence of term params. Let's just flatten that and then map it to, right, x dot name, cool, syntax. Or we want to move it to something like this. Hmm? Val params. And now we can just say like, uh, how do we do this now? I'm kind of, yeah, we can like print line args now. Args is, just strings. It's a sequence of strings. So what if I splice in, can I do that? I don't know. 
We're just having fun now. It's uh, we gotta. It needs to be like a, a literals, right? Can we just make it like this? Syntax. Can we just make it a literal? Can we just like tokenize it and parse it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now we have a uh, seek of stat and need a term of arg. Uh, so we got to do like a splice. Does that work? Or? No, no, because the, the body that the print line expects is. Yeah, try that. Is, is a term of arg. Eugene? I, I'm going to, even, I think this, I hit on this bug before. I'm just going to say it's a term of arg. <laughs> <laughs> and it printed too. <laughs> it's still a bit the wild, wild west, uh, but you can have lots of fun. Uh, so that printed too. And, uh, and we can go into the, into the main test object. And now if we change that to four, it's probably going to be. Right. And that's amazing. So here it just said print line org. And uh, uh, I don't have, you can even format the expanded code. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I think it, this is amazing, and I really want to like. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, so Eugene and Mark, uh, Michael have done a fantastic job, I think, in making this so easy. Um, I'm just kind of showing what's possible. I haven't really worked on any of this, uh, more just as an end user. So, are there any questions? Eugene. Yeah. So actually, you don't have to do it fast. You just have to parse this thing as a term. Ah, because I parsed it as a stat. That's correct. Now it makes a bit more sense. Like this. Is there a term parser? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, great. So, any other questions? Yeah? You say on your website that you're looking to um, replace scholar or reflect. So, when can I start using types? Y Eugene? <laughs> I have the fun job of just delegating these questions to Eugene. <laughs> well, so what can I say? Uh, currently we have a release of uh, Scala Meta uh, version 1.0. In fact, uh, we just released 1.1, uh, especially for, the, for this demo with some pieces. And semantic API, meaning types, it's uh, planned for Paradise 2.0. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm not going to be so careless as to promise and complete release dates, but please know that uh, we're working on it like, as, as we speak. So that's, uh, I, I briefly mentioned that uh, during my talk at Scala Days of the Unity, that uh, I'm going to join Twitter quite soon in a few months, and uh, there I'll have 50% of my time working on whatever I want with Scala open source. So that's what I want, and uh, that's what I'll dedicate my time first to. So I think uh, we'll make progress towards that. But, uh, well, time will show. And uh, yeah. please join my future talks. There will be more information. And uh, to add this uh, answer, I'm working on migration tooling to Dori. And we're definitely going to need types for that, too. So uh, if, if I may end up working a bit on that myself, if, if I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah. uh, no more questions? Then I think, uh, yeah. For uh, runtime compilation, would that still require the toolbox? Would those Scala out of meta provide any? Eugene? <laughs> OK, uh, probably I'll just uh, stand there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to grab a seat. <laughs> oh, what just happened? <laughs> Please don't run away. So anyway, runtime compilation and uh, the general runtime reflection story is uh, something that uh, we're unsure of. So uh, it was quite fun when we did Scala Reflect initially five years ago. 
It's quite fun that we can use uh, exactly the same API for both runtime and compile time reflection. And uh, as a matter of fact, I recently submitted my PhD thesis, and it's called uni Unification of Compile Time and Runtime Reflection in Scala. So it was kind of like a big deal. But uh, as we uh, looked how people are using Scala Reflect, we've noticed that, uh, uh, well, the community tends to gravitate towards compile time metaprogramming for bad or for worse. And so, well, it's, uh, it's really up in the air what happens uh, with uh, anything runtime. So if, if you have any strong opinions about that, if you have uh, critical things that depend on runtime reflection, probably now is, is the good time to, to, to drop by, I don't know, our Gitter channel, for instance, and say hi, or drop me an email. So please do that, and uh, we'll, we'll take your feedback into account. So, thank you. Are we out of time? Or are, are we, we out of time? No. Really? Oh, okay. So, uh, you have, uh, is there one more cool demo left? Yeah. Which That's was? Let me show it. Yeah, but uh, can, can I connect my laptop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try get in. Oh, you have it here. Cool. It's weird to be hijacking someone else's talk, but <laughs> well, we have an agreement well, with all of. I had hijacked your talking. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, standard. It looks good. Okay. Maybe let me just let it mirror. Maybe I'll optimize for myself. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's good. Let me close some stuff. So, well, macro annotations. Uh, th this is something that I've been working on uh, on and off uh, for the last couple of days. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's just recap what we've seen with the uh, debug annotation. So, as we have seen, uh, we have uh, this debug macro. I'm using Sublime Text, so, well, no IntelliJ for now at least, uh, which uh, times the uh, execution of given methods that we annotate, something like that. So probably that's too small. Typical error. No, no, it should be fine. So, all right, uh, here we, t we put the, the debug annotation on the macro and uh, on the on the method, and then every time we execute it, we will see something like that. So, let me compile. Oops, the macro first. So we compile the macro first, and then uh, we compile the usage, as usual, with uh, Scala Reflect macros. Uh, this is something that uh, we leave for future work, even though there have been a lot of improvements on other fronts. Here, we're still not done. So anyway, as you see, the result is pretty expected uh, and is consistent with what Olaf uh, showed us. Now let's go to IntelliJ. So as we've seen, you can, yeah, comment. As, as, as we've seen, uh, we can also expand the macros in IntelliJ, and we, we get exactly the same result. So that uh, should also not surprise us, because we've just uh, noticed how it was working in all this demo. What's neat, though, uh, and what I, I've been doing today, is that uh, we can go to Dottie. Here's, here's the Dottie part. And we can have a test file, exactly the, the same test file as we used uh, in Scala C. And we can try to compile it. Let's see what happens. Uh, so here are my .c script that uh, also puts the macro on the class path. And uh, well, something uh, something's going on. And compilation has succeeded uh, successfully. So now we can just uh, run it, run the file. Oops. Let's just use my scripts. What? Right. All right. All right. Okay. I don't know what happened, but as as you can see, uh, you've just witnessed uh, the first macro expansion that happened in Dotty.
And well, uh, that's exactly the uh, holy grail that we promised when we just started the, the Scala Meta project uh, two years ago. So we, we've just seen uh, that we have compiled a macro using the Scala C211.8 compiler with the Macro Paradise plugin. And, and then we have used exactly this meta program, exactly this class file, we didn't do anything else. And then we plugged it into the Dotty compiler and it worked just fine. Worked exactly as it uh, was working in Scala C. So that's, uh, that's the promise of portability of new style macros, this inline meta mechanism that Martin was introducing today. And uh, as we can see, it's fulfilled. So it's a, it's a pretty important day for me, actually. Thanks, uh, thanks for being here. <laughs> All right, so my cool demo is finished. All of please. I think Eugene started working on that like at 12 o'clock today. <laughs> well, the new compiler is pretty neat. And uh, well, back then I spent 10 days working maybe 15 hours per day on just hooking this into the Scala C and well, as you can see, you can do this fairly quickly in Dotty. It's quite amazing. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, no? All right, well, thank you. I think I'll call it. Uh... <laughs>